So what if you have to solve for all the values in a resistor circuit? And by all the values, I mean for each resistor, find the voltage and the current for that particular resistor. Well, over the years, I found a general strategy that seems to really help beginning students to keep their work organized and give them some clues for what steps they need to take next. And it involves using a table to keep their work organized. Now, in this particular case, you'd have a column for the resistances, a column for the voltages, and a column for the currents. The first row will always represent the first resistor's values. The second row would be the second resistor. If you did have more resistors, you'd have a third row, fourth row, etc. And then your last row is the equivalent resistance for that section of the circuit, or perhaps for the entire circuit if it's a simple circuit. The equivalent voltage would be the voltage over that whole section of the circuit and the current through that whole section of the circuit. Now again, if it's a simple circuit, this equivalent voltage and current is going to be the voltage on the battery and the current through the battery. Now in these rows, each row is going to be following the Ohm's law equations. So if you're solving for the resistance, it's the voltage divided by the current. If you're solving for the voltage, it's the current times the resistance. And if you're solving for the current, it's the voltage over the resistance. And for the first row, it would be the first voltage and current and the first resistance. But if you were doing it for one of the other rows, it would be the values on that row. Now the individual columns, that's going to depend on whether or not you've got a series circuit or a parallel circuit. I'm just going to move some of my stuff up here so it's easier to see. For my column equations, if it's a series circuit, then what you've got is that the resistances are going to add, the voltages would add, but the currents are all the same. But if it's a parallel circuit, then you're going to have a slightly different set of equations. The equivalent resistances are the inverses. The voltages are going to be equal to one another. That equation is not quite right, so I'll correct it right now. And the currents would add up. So in a series circuit, it's the currents that are equal to each other. In a parallel circuit, it's the voltages that are equal to each other. So that's going to give you your column equations. And again, it's going to depend on whether you've got series or parallel. So you'll look at your description or your circuit diagram and figure out which set of those is going to be the proper one. Now you'll start by filling in any values that you know, and then anytime you have a row or column where there's only one value missing, you'll be able to solve for that missing value. I'm going to do a couple other videos here with some examples for both series circuits and parallel circuits to give you a better idea, but I'm going to put those in separate videos.